and there we go all right it's game time everybody how are you doing so good to see you it's been a long time since i've done a youtube video uh, we are back and we have a lot of stuff to share with you guys and the way i wanted to introduce this since i do live videos for you guys on instagram monday through friday and if you're out youtube follow me on instagram because you're missing out on 15 to 45 minutes of free content five times a week every day at 11 30 central so you fall just find look up seth kneep just one dime you'll see me every day monday through friday i'm doing live content here on instagram hey guys how's it going um so we right now are live in three places and i wanted to make a big deal about this for two reasons number one i'm going to share with you the steps that i have taken and continue to take to get from the beginning at zero to well over a million dollars on amazon and it is far beyond that now. And the reason to use the word million, the number million, is because that's a big goal for a lot of people. They're like, man, if I can get to a million, then I could do so forth. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that. I'm going to show you mistakes I made along the way. I'm going to share tactics with you that we use and continue to use. And I'm also going to talk about the frustrating parts of selling on Amazon, something that a lot of people don't talk about. Now, the best that I can, I'm going to take questions as we go. So here on YouTube, here on Facebook, and here on Instagram. Again, if you're not following me on Instagram, you're missing out on 15 to 45 minutes of free content five times a week. So go find, just search Seth Kinney, just go there, follow me. It's here and I do it live constantly. And it's a really cool group of people asking some awesome questions. So much has changed since I began in this room doing videos. So much has changed. And it's amazing to see what's happened in just a few years. It's, it's almost mind blowing. I also, at the end of today's conversation with you guys, I have some special announcements to share with you. This is stuff we have not shared with anyone all at one time, everything yet. And so I'm super excited to share some stuff with you guys. It's gonna be at the very end. And it's, I'll just say it has something to do with getting products into Walmart. It has something to do with a TV show like Shark Tank, but better or beginning that we will be starting has something to do with China suppliers, Mexico and India. There's some really cool stuff going on I'm super excited about. And that's the reason I've been so quiet lately on YouTube. I made a commitment to you guys on Instagram to do live videos, so I wanted to follow through on that and continue on that. YouTubers, it didn't really make that commitment. <laughs> so, But I'm here, live, in the flesh, and I want to help you guys. I want you guys and your questions to be real and raw, okay? I want you to tell me exactly what you're struggling with so I can help you with the next step. But before we do that, I'm gonna monologue just for a few minutes and tell you the steps we took and continue to take to sell on Amazon. Step number one, you have to find a product that people already love and want. And when you do this, it is really, really important you understand that the higher the competition and demand, the more you will spend up front but the more money you will make later on as a result, okay? That's really, really, really important to understand, you guys. I get messages every day on Instagram, over 100 on Facebook, and emails as well, and other platforms like Telegram. And the most common question that comes up is people will say this. They say, I have a product, I launched it, it's not moving, why? And I can tell you 99 times out of 100, it's for one reason, you guys. It's because the person doesn't understand the difference, that the balance of demand versus competition. When you're selling a product, you guys, it is so important that you make sure the demand is higher and the competition is lower. It is the, it is the differentiation between those two points. That's where you make money. That's how you grow your business. This is so important, you guys. But how do you know that? I'm going to show you guys right now the easiest way to figure that out. This will also show you how to launch products on Viral Launch and other platforms. And we do recommend a lot of different services because we don't believe any one coaching program company has all the answers. So that's why we use and leverage other people and bring in different people. Viral Launch, we, we don't like we're not part of their business. Okay. They spoke at our summit, but they do have a very good program. I think it's a little bit expensive. We're actually coming out with our own, which is way less expensive, but I'm going to show you how to find out why your product is not working, okay? Now, here it is. If you know the top five keywords for your product, and you should, and if you don't, then you gotta start over and go back and say, wait, how did I even begin to launch this product in the first place? 
what are the top five keywords I'm trying to rank for? Everything goes back to keywords. You guys saw me talk about this in that Sherlock Holmes style video. It goes back to keywords. So if I go to amazon.com and I search for my famous tea mug here, this guy's getting a reputation, by the way. I'm starting to see him pop up on Amazon because <laughs> I keep talking about him on Instagram video. It's hilarious. I have no idea what the J stands for. I'll let you guys figure that one out. But if one of my keywords is wooden mug and I search for it on amazon.com, as a general rule of thumb, and you can do this without any software, you guys, as a general rule of thumb, when that pop, when that comes up, every seller on that first page is going to be one of the competitive high ranking sellers. Now, again, it varies like this, right? Every day is different. Obviously, that's going to change and it should. The marketplace is fluid. But I'm going to go look at those and I'm going to say, okay, over a period of time, if they continue to be landing on the first page, what are they doing that I'm not? And I'm not saying just copy them. You want to copy them and then do better than them. If you want to differentiate, you should have everything your competitors do well and then do better than that. This is really important. Now, how do I know why my product isn't selling? I'll tell you, either they're not finding it because it's not ranking or they are find it, finding it, but it's not converting. And the reason it's not converting is when people see it, what they wanted and what you're offering is not good enough. It's not good. You're not offering enough value. I see some pictures and I go, like people, that first picture, that featured photo, it has to be so good. It wants to jump out off the page and like grab you like, look, buy me. Like it's got to be amazing because they have no way of touching your product. Do you know that 90% of people still buy in retail stores? Do you realize the opportunity that brings us? Like guys, we have, we are just at the beginning of the economy. Some people think, oh, it's saturated. It's too many people. No, the opposite is true. It's not saturated. There are millions of people who still are not buying online and it just keeps growing. So people who jump in now have a much bigger opportunity than people who jump in five years from now. So going back to this though, when you search for your keyword, one of your top five keywords on Amazon, that first page of search results is the most precious data you will ever find anywhere. I don't care if you're talking about Amazow, Jungle Scout, Market Intelligence, Helium 10, it doesn't matter. They're all ultimately going to the same page and getting the data from there. So if you understand the data on that first page of search results, 90% of what you need to know is right there. Listen, my wife and I were doing 20,000 a month on Amazon in revenue, 40 to 60% profit margin before we ever used these special tools. We just used common sense and went to the page and searched and studied and searched and studied and hustled and messed up and lost $20,000 along the way, but we just kept going. So when you go and you say, okay, so I, I have a product. I need to know how, if it's going to sell or not. One, number one, it's either not ranking. That means people aren't finding it. Or number two, the problem with the product is it's not converting when people find it. How do you find this out? Well, it's very simple. Let's say you're selling this mug right here. You're going to go to amazon.com and you're going to search the keyword for it. If your product doesn't show up on the first page, then that means at least 70% of the sales you're not getting at least probably more you're not getting. So you have to find out how do we get it on the first page? It, you have to, it has to sell. The only way to get a product to rank, the number one only way is to get it to sell. And guys, when it sells and sells and the more it sells, it begins to rank more and more and more and more. And as a result, that's how you begin to go further and further and further and further and further. And that's how people start finding it. But here's a problem. When people find it, if they don't buy it, it will drop immediately. So don't go to some application like Viral Launch and say, hey, I'm going to get this thing selling. I'm going to give out 50 a day because I know the more it sells, the higher it ranks. As soon as you're done over your seven minimum day period, maybe 10 days, guess what, guys? If it doesn't convert, it's going to drop again. You just spent hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars and all that money was wasted. So how do you know how it converts? So there's two things. There are two things I must know in order to get from zero to a million. Here it is. Number one, am I showing up on the first page of search results? How do I get that by selling a bunch? Number two, is it converting? Do I at least have 20% conversion? If a hundred people land on the listing, how many of them buy? At least 20 people need to buy. Now, this is a general rule of thumb. Obviously, it's going to vary 
based on the product category. Some product categories, lower conversion rate because it's a higher ticket item. As a general rule of thumb, the more expensive it is, the lower conversion you need. And that's normal because the cheaper it is, the faster people buy, the more impulsive, the faster the money comes in, but your profit margins are lower. Okay. So remember those two things. Number one, is it ranking? Are people finding it? Number two, is it converting? When they find it, do they buy it? Okay. Now let's go back for a minute. How do I get this data? How do I do it? Let me just assume that you did your product research research badass. Okay. You did an awesome job in your product research. You know, for a fact that there are five to seven keywords all pointing to your product with high demand and decently low competition. Let's assume that. So you launched your product is sitting there and you're asking, how do I get it to sell? You were going to run a PPC ad campaign. You were going to spend, get ready for it, anywhere from three to $700 up front on your automatic ad campaign. You go, well, Seth, why would I do that? Oh, and by the way, you probably won't get many sales from that campaign. Seth, you gotta be kidding. You're telling me I'm just gonna throw three to $700 away and I'm supposed to somehow be okay with that. Yes, and let me tell you why. If you were starting, here's another question I get all the time. <laughs> okay, I so much right now I wanna share with you guys. If you were starting your own e-commerce website, do you know how much you would spend, how much time and money you would spend just to get it ranking? Probably 10 to 20 times more than you ever would have to on Amazon. If you started your brick and mortar store, do you know how much money you would have to spend just to get it started? Just to get approved to cook if it includes food or to have a grill or to sell alcohol on all the fines and fees and applications that go through that or to make sure you're in a good spot and the rental fees or the leasing fees unless you buy it and the taxes like it's not even comparable. I know you guys get frustrated. You're going, Seth, Amazon sometimes sucks. And I agree. You are guilty until proven innocent. Someone says, I don't like your product. It's not real. Okay. You're gone. Prove it. How do I prove it? I didn't do anything wrong. Okay. I get that part. But in my mind, the cost and the frustration of that is not nearly as much as if you're going to go start your own business without any platform at all. And you're going to build your new platform, whether that's a physical street corner, like a brick and mortar, or it's your own .com website. Okay. So keep that in mind. So when you launch your ad campaign, it's an automatic ad campaign. It's only goal is to collect data. And 10 days later, you will click on the little ad reports blue button. You'll click it, you download the spreadsheet. You're going to take that data and you're going to find out three things. What keywords are relevant? In other words, a lot of impressions are showing up that indicates relevance. Number two, what keywords have a, log, a large click through rate out of a hundred times. There's an impression. How often does someone click on the ad? And number three, which ones are converting? What is my, what is the cost per click? Notice how many times does someone have to click before they actually buy it? How many times does someone have to click versus buy is a percentage conversion rate. Okay. You're going to use those three pieces of data to determine whether your product is convertible or not. And second, how relevant it is to your five to seven power keywords. Now we talk a lot about this in our own coaching program. You need five to seven power keywords. What that means is it's sort of like your elite. Imagine you are the general of an army and you have to take on these huge monsters. Okay. And you have five to seven knights who are amazing and badass. They're your best. You have other knights too, maybe 10,000, but your five to seven, they're like David's mighty men from the old Testament. They are amazing. Throw them to a pit with a lion. They will take them on any day, any time. Those keywords is where you're going to make money, but you still have to test them. So your PPC ad campaign, you guys will tell you whether or not your product is converting. And if it's not, you must make it convertible before you spend hundreds and thousands of dollars trying to get it to rank. Okay. This is really important, but you won't know if it's convertible unless people see it. So the purpose of a PPC ad is to get it in front of people's eyes. So every day someone types in, Oh, there it is. Someone else. Oh, there it is. And now how many of those people actually buy it? The PPC ads also will do other things for you. They give you other product ideas and a hundred more things. Okay. This is super important. Now let me go back a little bit about what happened with me when I started. I didn't run PPC ads for the longest time. I didn't touch them. And the reason wasn't because I didn't want to, I just didn't have time to think and learn about it. I thought, man, if I'm going to do this, I got to learn. I got to figure it out. Let me just try this on my own. I had a very independent Lone Ranger mentality. If I could go back and start over, 
I believe we could have gotten to our first three and a half million revenue in a year in Amazon twice as fast, twice as fast, you guys, so much faster. And the reason this is so important is because PPC ads get you data quickly. Most entrepreneurs, if they're new, they don't understand the value of time. And I sometimes I get frustrated with my own self because I feel like I'm saying it too much, but I need to say it again. When you go slow, you lose money. Every day you're waiting, you're not making money. So it's better to spend the money, get the data from the PPC ad automatic campaign, use the data to convert. And guys, guess what? Then you can start making more money. You need to divorce yourself from your money. You need to put it over here in a box and say, bye bye. You're going to work for me. You don't own me. I own you. I'm your master. You're not my master. But if you are mastered by money, if money controls you, I guarantee you, you're going to struggle with succeeding as an entrepreneur. You have to say bye bye to it. So tomorrow you can say hello to twice as much. That's how it works. So you have to run with that first automatic ad campaign to get the data. Now, let me go back again. The reason we still succeeded and got to our, I'll never forget. There's several milestones in my mind, the 10,000 a month, the 20,000 a month, the three and a half million revenue in a year. I'll never, these are like huge milestones for me, for me. And, and you know, compare me to some Amazon sellers. They're doing three and a half million in a month. Some people on our team are doing that in a month. They're doing way better than I am. They're amazing. That's awesome. But so if you're feeling discouraged hearing that in case you just started, don't. I have people who do way better than me. It really doesn't matter where you are. What matters is are you moving forward? Are you continuing to progress? Okay, so back again. Imagine you didn't even touch PPC ads. What was our number one secret weapon? I've talked about this in several podcasts and shows. It was studying the critical reviews of the competitors. There was one weekend I locked myself in a hotel and I sat there and I had Terapeak open because back in that day, all I wanted to do was sell on eBay. I didn't think that much about Amazon. And I just searched and searched and searched until I felt like mush. And I remember walking in and out of the room, getting discouraged. I go get a juice. I would go get coffee and I come back and I just kept going. And finally, after going through so many products, I stumbled upon one. I tried it half confident because you know, when you research so much, you don't, you're like trying to think, am I still confident about this? In the early days, you really don't know. You feel like you're, you're chasing your tail. You're like, you just get all confused in your head. You guys know what I'm talking about? I hate that feeling, but I remember what that felt like. And boom, this product started to take off. Then I went back and I analyzed, what did I do? I'll tell you exactly what I did. I found out what are other competitors failing at that I could do better. One of the, the most amazing ways to find a product that will get you to a million is you find a product that has super high demand. It's selling like crazy and the reviews suck. They're like three, two and a half stars. People are still buying this thing when the reviews are that bad. Hmm. Maybe if I built the product and made it better, I can make a lot more money. You see, the demand's there and they're still buying it when it's crappy. Then they're really going to buy it if it's better. There you already have a differentiation strategy based on what's the reason people are putting critical reviews. In the past, I would always say study the one star reviews. I don't say that anymore because a lot of times those are from competitors trying to take other people down, which is stupid and a waste of time. I've never, ever given a negative review on a competitor's product and never will because for me that's just too far that's not a hack that's just like in my opinion that's immoral that's just too far you've done it god bless you i'm not judging you for it that's just your opinion but i will say what they were failing at we did better we built it out and you know what it was frustrating as heck you want to know why because no one else in alibaba was doing this we couldn't find a supplier to build the product you know how frustrating that is so so how am i supposed to make money how do i get it built if no one else is building this product what I had to learn is if I can't find a supplier, I am so blessed and so lucky. So if you're frustrated because you can't find a supplier, you need to look in the mirror and say, yes, <laughs> because that means once you do, anything can be built, you guys. Don't, in your mind, don't think, hey, if it's not an Alibaba, it doesn't exist. No, Alibaba is not God and it's not king and it's not just a phone book, okay? There's more than that, but it's definitely not king and not God. If you find a supplier, it is really, if you find a product that has no supplier, you are in a good place. That means, guess what? The other 1,500 competitors trying to find the same product are also frustrated. The only question is, who's going to endure to the end? And if you have it in your heart, you will find a way, instead of blaming Alibaba or blaming Amazon, you'll win. You'll make money. 
You know what I found? I find this across the board, you guys. <laughs> I talk to so many people who sell on Amazon. It's not even funny. The people who are making a lot of money are just positive people. Negative whiners, complainers, they just don't succeed. So if you're, if you're a life-sucking negative person, you're doomed unless you change. I'm just going to be blunt, guys. I'm in a really blunt mood. I need to change this black around to something serious like black, okay? Because if you're whining and complaining, your life sucks and you need to change. I'm just going to be blunt. You will not succeed if you blame other people for your problems. I know what it is like to bust my freaking ass to make money. I know what it's like because I went through it. I remember walking around Austin asking people to double the dime, feeling like a stupid idiot for doing it. And guess what? I had to keep going. I had to get the lies out of my head. I had to not blame my wife, my kids, Amazon, the society, my culture, how I grew up, all these things. And I had to decide I'm going to do something different. And by grace alone, I did. I did. And that's why I can stand here in front of you today and say I'm a multimillionaire, not because I'm special, but because I suffered enough to care enough to do something about it, to get angry enough, healthy anger, so I can make a difference. And now the opportunity to help people in 89 freaking countries do this now with a team of badass coaches who I would trust my kids and money with, that's just phenomenal. That's unbelievable. So I'm just going to be blunt. If you're a negative person, get over it. Stop complaining. Deal with your own shit. I said it. Sorry if I offended you if you're religious, but I said it. You know, Paul in one of the New Testament letters uses a worse word. Most people don't know that. He was angry. He was mad. He said it. Get over your shit and grow up. Grow up and make money and start making things happen. And it has to start with you. You know what you do? You stand in front of the mirror and you go, I got problems. <laughs> I got issues and I am going to grow up and get over them. And if other people do things that are not fair, I'm not going to blame my success on them because as soon as you do that, guess what happens? You've now empowered them to control you. You said, oh, they determine my future. Guys, no one has the control to do that. You determine your future. Okay. That's all I want to say about that. I will step down calmly and nicely, <laughs> but I had to say it because sometimes I get a little pissed when I see people complaining and whining when I'm finding them not do stuff. Now, let me switch sides and talk about something else. When you're selling an Amazon, the way you get to a million dollars is you find products that will make you a million dollars. And by that, I mean, let me be very clear, you guys. It's not one product that becomes your savior. I know it's very popular to say how to find the product that will save your life and save your marriage. It's not like that. Some of your products are going to do 400 a week. It's not a lot of money. And others are going to do 40,000 a week. That is a lot of money, depending on your perspective, right? But all of them count. We have just under 100 SKUs. There are people on my team who have five SKUs and do more money than we do, okay? So it depends on your strategy. So when you build, when you find a product, there are two things you're looking for. Is there a ton of demand? How can I make it better and beat the competition? As a general rule of thumb, I will not launch a product if it has 20 or more competitors, strong competitors. There could be 10,000 competitors, but I mean strong ones. And the easiest way to figure that out if they're selling 15 times a day or more, they're a strong competitor. As a general rule of thumb, depends on the category as well. Okay, there's a ton more I could share with you guys. I just, um, let me go through questions. I know there's a ton of questions. I'll start with YouTube since I haven't been with YouTube for the longest time. Great to see everybody. What's up, Ramonda? What's up, ID? Okay. All right, guys. So why didn't you upload any video for a long time? Because we're... I'm going to announce that in a little bit, and you guys will soon know some very cool stuff we've been working on. Um, okay, so I love this question. What's up, says Seth. You cannot start with $0 because you need money to invest, and then FBA send them to Amazon. If you drop ship to buy item and resell it, it's again money. Minimum $50 you should have. I would counter that and say, you're right. You can't start with 0 You can start with $0.10. Cents. It's a mindset. It's not a numbers thing. It's a mindset thing. You could start with 10 cents. In fact, what's up? Go into your garage, go anywhere in your house, go find things you don't need. So you could technically say you have zero money, right? But you have assets and go sell them and get that 50 bucks. I know what you're saying. Yes, at some point you need money to make money. Yes, but to do that, you have to do something. I started with the dime. All right. Um, what's his Instagram account? Seth Kinney. Um, How do you take control of your brand on Amazon? 
Okay, there are three steps, you guys. This is important. Six months ago, I would have been less emphatic about what I'm about to tell you right now on Instagram, on YouTube, and on Facebook. Here they are. Number one, build a brand. You will make more money in the long run. Amazon rewards brand builders more than resellers. I'm not saying you shouldn't resell. I interviewed someone who we only gave this information access to our advanced community a week and a half ago. He has 60,000 SKUs. They do hundreds of millions a year on Amazon and they're resellers. So I'm not saying it's a dead enterprise, but to do that, you need very inside contacts for manufacturers to get the prices low. Build a brand that will make you money. This is how my wife and I have done it through arbitrage and private label. But I would say 80% through private label. Most of our money has been through private label. So you build a brand. How do you do it? You find your brand name. You get it trademarked. It will take about eight months. It's worth it, guys. Don't wait. Start now. Then you go to Amazon and you apply for what's called brand registry. All that means is your brand. Let's just say your brand was just one dime. Okay. Let's just say that. Your brand now is registered in Amazon's catalog, but you have to have a trademark to do that. In the past, you didn't need a trademark. So we had multiple brands already registered. Then we had to go back and add trademarks to them or the trademarks we had, we had to go and update them to remain in the brand registry. That's step number one. You get it, well, step number two. So you get a trademark, you register brand, Amazon's brand registry. If you just Google Amazon brand registry, it'll come up, it's easy to find. There is a third step, however, and this is the hardest one, you ready? You need to get your brand gated. Have you guys ever tried to sell Disney products on Amazon? Have you noticed? If you just go to Seller Central, you go add a product, you type in the ASIN or of a product already selling as if you're going to sell it and you say, sell mine. And it'll come up with this little yellow box that says you can't sell this without, unless you have permission from the brand owner. That means they were brand gated. So you can be brand registered, but not brand gated. Now, what is the difference? Brand registered simply means your brand is on there. It's in your catalog. Once you add a UPC to a brand registered item, you can't change it. Okay. You cannot change it. Once your brand registered, you can't change the UPC without changing the product. You will lose your ranking. So make sure if you're doing GS1 UPCs, it's one that you like, you're going to stick with. Okay. Number two, to get brain gated, instead of saying, Hey, Amazon, can you just get me gated for this entire brand? It's better to start with a single ASIN. You send in an ASIN and say, look here and make it your best product, your best selling, highest customer satisfaction. Guys, take time. It's worth it. Time is an asset. Treasure it. You don't get a refund on it. Send it in just one ASIN and it will take a while. And it might take six months. I think it took us like four and a half. Once it is brand gated, it is, that item is brand gated. It is easier then to say, would you also brand gate these other items? So start with one ASIN, expand it to the brand. Don't start with the brand. It will save you time and it is a faster path to success. That is how you protect your brand on Amazon. Okay, next question. Elisa says, selling on Amazon's handmade platform, is there a way to sell big on Amazon when on this platform? Right now, is there a way to sell big? It's growing. Is it huge? No, it's not. It's growing. And a lot of people, Lisa, don't think Amazon handmade. They think Etsy, Pinterest links to other websites. They think very custom. So here's the thing. For those of you guys doing handmade, your opportunity is very future. And it's very real, in my opinion. It's one of the reasons we're going to Guatemala in December is to talk to people who do beautiful leather handmade products like nobody's business and they're handmade. I mean, guys, one of the guys, one of our coaches is from Guatemala. He gave me this notebook. It is so beautiful. My wife, this little purse item, like they're amazing. These handmade, you look at them, you can tell this was not created in some artificial factory. The thing with handmade is you charge a lot more. Okay, so we partnered up with someone who sells on eBay. She's an amazing eBay seller. She sold jewelry to um, actually more than one queen. Think about that. So she sold jewelry to the queen and we've partnered up. She's the manufacturer. We are the sellers. We understand e-commerce, SEO, how to rank all that stuff. Like we sleep it, we, we live it, we dream it, everything. She understands her product. So we went in 50, 50 and we're working together and they're all handmade. Do you know how much we sell these things for on eBay? 300, 400, $600. What? You know what's weird? If you're on eBay and you take that price and you drop, if you drop it to like 200, all of a sudden your sales slow. But why is that? Because 
there is a time when you need to raise the price that will actually increase your conversions because people consider it more valuable. So again, when people think Amazon, they don't think handmade. They think general products, but it's a growing category. So if you're in it, Elisa, do not give up. Stick with it and keep going. And I would highly recommend you go to Guatemala with us because you'll get way better prices, assuming they make the kind of products you want to do. All right. Hello, Alvaro. Good to see you. Okay. Here's another question. These are great questions, you guys. I love his YouTube channel name. It's not my name. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I, I love it when they do uh, F Wi-Fi networks and they call it like not your Wi-Fi. That's awesome. Um, how to increase desirability and how to get reviews legally. Oh, this is this is a juicy question. <laughs> I love this one. All right, Mr. Not My Name. How do you increase desirability? Number one, your photo. Go to PicFu, take your two best photos, upload them, do a vote, pay the whatever 20 bucks a thing and say, hey, what do you guys think? People will vote on which one they like more. That's called split testing. Go with the one they like more. Then go to like find 10, 15 people, go to Amazon, search all the products, make sure yours is on the first page. If it's not, edit it and get it on there and say, which one would you pick? And if at least 90, 95, 80% of those people are not picking your product, there's something you need to change about it. So your photo is the number one most important thing. Number two, and I like how your questions are connected because reviews, let me talk about this. Some of you guys, I know some of you guys have done this, okay? And I think you're a little crazy, but I did it too, so I can't be hypocritical. <laughs> you launched a product, you're, you're putting it on places like Viral Launch, you're running PPC ads, and it has no reviews on it. And you're saying, why isn't it converting? Well, come on, guys. Which should you get first? Should you be spending money and getting people to see it first? Or should you be getting reviews on it first and then ranking it? Okay? If I see your product and it has good reviews, the chances of me buying are much higher. I don't know if I've ever bought a single product on Amazon that didn't have reviews. Now, I don't represent all our population. There's some people who will. But you got to get reviews on it first, you guys. Like, it just makes sense. All right? So how do you do that legally? Hmm. Okay. So this is not a legal, illegal issue. This is more like a, a policy, breaking policy issue. All right? We're not talking about a government legal issue. We're talking about a company issue. You ready? Here we go. The easiest, simplest, most pure, unadulterated way to get a review that is 100% innocent and white hat as it can be <laughs> is you follow up with a very humorous message. And just like Jump Send has done a really good job on this. And you just something really funny. Talk about your staff. Talk about your office. And say, look, I hope you love the product. You know, make some joke off of the product. And as you're talking about, say, look, we would be so honored if you would leave us a review. You can't say, will you leave us a positive review? You just say, will you leave us a review? Now, we have seen, by being very creative with that email, we have seen uh, um, our review, organic review return go up. But over time, maybe totally transparent with you guys, I have depended less and less and less on that because what I mentioned at the beginning of this video is speed. The longer it takes you to convert, if, if people aren't buying a product because it doesn't have enough reviews on it, then when you look at it, like, why isn't it converting? Why is it converting? You don't know if the reason it's not converting is because of a lack of reviews or the, the first photo is terrible. You see? So you don't want not getting reviews to be a reason for it not converting. You getting inaccurate data. Now you spend tons of time and money trying to fix something that doesn't need to be fixed. So you need to fix the review problem as soon as you can. Now, I just answered your question. I'll take one step further and say there are gray hat and black hat techniques of getting reviews. One of them here, really black hat. I've never done this and I don't think I ever will. No, I really won't ever. Go to Fiverr and just find a bunch of random companies to boom, just go in there and, and send you reviews. Like they create all these fake accounts. It's dangerous. I wouldn't do it. There's a lot of companies in Bangladesh and Pakistan, not anything against those countries. There's a lot of hackers there who will do this for you. I wouldn't recommend it, you guys. But let me share something with you guys that might be helpful. You can ask family and friends to buy it and review it for you. Just make sure you don't have a strong social media connection online so Amazon's robots can't scrape those and track them. Now, Just One Dime has something very special for all Just One Dime members only. And it's very automated. It's very systematic to help you with this. And that's all I'll say about that because I'm very public right now. <laughs> okay, cool, guys. All right, let's keep going. Um, 
Uh, thank you, Dan. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that you feel like that. Thank you. I, I enjoy doing this. I've always been a teacher and I love teaching. So this is awesome. What is the best tool for online arbitrage? Khaled, I'm going to be, this is, I'm not being sarcastic when I say this. It's the Amazon Seller Central app. It helps so much. Yeah. Hey, thank you for that. Someone just sent $5 and not asking for it at all, but thank you very much. That was very kind of you. I'm glad this is helpful to you. All right, guys, um, why don't we create a WhatsApp group and exchange ideas and help each other? I think it's an awesome idea, Khalil. Very, very cool. What's up, Joseph? How are you doing? Oh, my goodness, guys. I've never seen more. I've never seen more questions in my life, I swear. Um, Hugo, that was very nice of you. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, let's see. John says, okay, Seth, how does Amazon, does Amazon allow watermarking your product images to protect people from stealing your beautiful images? No. Technically, they belong to Amazon per their contract, but legally you can still fight that. CJ Rosenbaum is my favorite lawyer for defending yourself on Amazon and fighting for your rights. I mean, the guy's in Brooklyn, New York. What are you going to say? You know, he knows how to fight. <laughs> He's really, really good. He was actually at our summit. He can help you a ton with that. But to answer your question, they don't allow you to, but I've never seen Amazon even wrap someone's knuckles for it. So there's even people in our community who've done it. Like their first their first picture will say like 100% satisfaction guarantee. And I personally think that's kind of cheesy, but it doesn't matter if you think it's cheesy. What matters is it does it help it convert. So that's one of those really, really whitish gray hack, hacks, if you want to call it. Yeah. What launch platform do you suggest? In all humility, and I'm not saying this because it's mine, but of course I believe in it. It's Just One Dimes. Just One Dime has a badass launch platform. And what I love about it is it's real. People are constantly helping and creating better ways to help each other launch products. And there's two things you want in your launch, you guys. You want to get reviews on there as fast as you can. I've always recommended 25. Always. But again, it depends on how many reviews your competitors have. And we could go deep into that if you wanted to. Second, the more buys you get, the more it ranks your BSR. We also have a hack that we only share on our team. I've never shared it publicly that allows your listing. One guy, it boosted it so quickly, he ran out of inventory. And he's like, guys, this works too well. I ran out of inventory to sell too fast. <laughs> so we're like, close the listing, close the listing, because it'll help you not to lose your BSR ranking. Um, that product research I just mentioned sounds super simple compared to yours. Can you comment on that? Let me go back, Doug, and see if I can see your question. Um, tell, let's see. Okay, am, amazing selling machine guys only go by this simply. Product research criteria, 500 plus under 5,000 BSR, 1,000 reviews claim that's all it takes to find a 30,000 a month product. Um, amazing selling machine are good guys. I have nothing against them at all. Um, we're not going to agree on everything. It depends on your product category. So to just say 5,000 or lower BSR as a general rule of thumb, that's a helpful general rule of thumb. That means it's selling a lot, but you have to go much deeper. So yes, we do teach a much more in-depth process. If that's all that they're teaching, that's very, very specific. How do you know that it's going to rank? Let me just give you here. I'll share something with you guys. You guys will probably really like this a lot. Okay. If you want to know how to get your product on the first page of search results, I'm going to show you exactly how to know how to do that. You ready? Remember I said you need to know your top five to seven power keywords. That's really important. Assuming you know, let's just say there's five. Assuming you know them. If, let's just take one and let's say it's a wooden Renaissance mug because I think the Renaissance is awesome. So you search wooden Renaissance mug. And on the first page of search results, you take, you take every single one of the results on that listing, those competitors, and you look at their BSR. Now, remember, guys, the BSR, the BSR, we have a tool, actually, with for our members only that will show you approximately how many sales per day that item is selling based on the BSR, based on the keyword. So if I find using that Just One Dime tool, if I find that the the middle result on that first page, like the middle, like there's 10 up here, there's nine down here, the one in the middle, that they're selling 20 times a day. As a general rule of thumb, if they're selling that many over a period of time consistently and they keep showing up on that first page of search results somewhere in the middle, guess how many I need to be selling per day? There you go. I need to be selling 20. So to get to their ranking, I somehow have to sell 20 a day to get there. The problem is, how do you sell 20 a day if you're not there yet? Well, you say, hey, Bobby McGee, you guys will meet him someday, I promise. You will, trust me, it'll be at a summit, you'll see. <laughs> Maybe in Los Angeles in February. Hey, Bobby McGee, will you buy my product for me? And all 50 of your friends, and I'll give you guys a 90% discount. Now, guess what happens? 
they got a product for dirt cheap. I know it costs you money, but that's the cost of marketing. Remember we talked about the beginning, you got to spend money. You have to. So I'm going to give them away to you and make sure you have enough friends who can buy 20 of these a day for a minimum of seven days. Now do the math. You're thinking, Oh, Seth, that's like a lot of money. I know it is. I know it is, but not compared to the money you'll make next month when you're ranking. So when his friends do that, all of a sudden for that keyword, when they type in wooden Renaissance mug, all of a sudden mine's showing up now. It worked. It ranked it. It's based on sales. There's one problem. Does my product have reviews on it? Do I know that it actually converts? Do people actually, out of 100 people, how many would actually buy it? Because guess what? If people don't keep buying it at that rate after I gave it away, because obviously that was an artificial ranking, right? Now we're talking about organic real ranking. If it doesn't keep being sold at that level, it will disappear and be buried into the nothingness of the 707 search results page on Amazon. And the way you avoid that is you first run a PPC ad campaign and you look at the data and find out how well you're converting. I want to know this. It's your um, your session percentage rate. Okay, A session means if I, Seth, go to your product and I look at your product five times in the day. I looked at it once before breakfast. I looked at it another time after breakfast because I was hungry. I needed to eat. And then, you know, I had to, I went to the gym. I came back and looked at it again. Then I talked to my wife about it because it's a big purchase. And I looked at it again. That counts as one session. So if you go to business reports on Seller Central, you click it and you download it. That's one session because I, within a 24 hour period, looked at it five times, one session, five page views, one session. Page views have value, but much less. Sessions have more value on Amazon. You guys tracking with me? This is in your business reports. Even if you don't know exactly what I'm talking about, understand the principle and you can apply it later and make money. So now I want, so that one session, if that turned into a sale, that means the conversion rate for that session was 100%. One person looked at it within a 24 hour period, as many times as they wanted, and it was purchased. I want to know out of 100 people who go to my listing, do at least, general rule of thumb, depending on the category, do at least 20 of them buy, okay? Now, when I get to that point, that's when I'm saying, okay, I'm ready. Now let's rank this baby. Let's do giveaways. Let's pour more money into PPC ads. And you know what's really cool, you guys? This is what I love about Amazon ads. People get nervous about spending money. But let me ask you a question. If I gave you, if I told you, give me $5,000, 5000 and two months from now, that will become 50000 And you knew it was true. Would you do it? Of course you would. So if you spend 300 on PPC, knowing it's going to make you 500 more, you're going to do it. Well, well, man, if 300 makes me, let's just make it simple. If I spend 100, I make 200 more. Well, why not spend 1,000 and make 2,000 more? You see, it's just simple math. So how can I confidently throw $1,000 a day into one PPC ad? I know that sounds crazy because I already know the conversion. I already have confidence. I know my numbers. I know it's going to sell, but there's one caveat to that. PPC ads work like this. The more you spend, the more money you make after you know your conversion and keep watching your competition because they're changing constantly. Okay. But there's one thing you need to know. There is a cap. It's not like you spend 20,000 and you're going to make 40,000. You know why? Because once you spend enough money on an ad that's showing up in the first page of search results, spending more money, if it's staying there all day, isn't going to do much. Now it's true, you only spend money when they click on the ad. So you have your budget, your daily limit, you'll never go higher than that, but often you'll be below that because you never spend more money than they click. But there reaches a point where the conversion will start to slow because you're showing up so much, you're starting to spend a little more than they're gonna buy. Does that make sense? It's almost like over advertising. So you need to watch it every day. If I were you, I would check it four times a day until it's really running smoothly. And then after that, two times a day. And then after that, once in the evening. And then after that, hire someone who can help you manage it. And if something weird happens, they'll tell you, you can jump in and fix it right away. Okay. What I just shared with you guys, what I de- principle I shared with you, I hope it's helpful. I'm telling you it will make you money. Now here's what I love about entrepreneurialism. You guys, that principle applies to real estate. It applies to eBay. It even applies to your body. I spend more money to make more money. I spend money to eat more healthy so that I can be stronger, which means I live longer, which means I'm healthier, have more energy to work more, to make more money. See, 
that principle, you guys, is everywhere. And that's what I love about entrepreneurs. Okay, that was a long answer. Let's go to the next question. Um, actually, I'm going to take just a, a break here. I want to share with you guys a few things that I absolutely love um, that we've been talking about a long time and working on in the back end. And I want to announce them to you now. I've never on three platforms announced this publicly, what I'm about to tell you. Um, but this is why I love the community of Just One Dime. I get to work with some people who are amazing. And one of my goals is to surround myself with people who are better than me. And it keeps me humble and it keeps me going and learning. We now have a, <laughs> within our community, one of our own students has risen up and his Amazon sales are awesome. But for years, he has worked with people like uh, people on Shark Tank, Dave and John, and others, Robert Kawasaki, to get products into big box stores. As I mentioned earlier, 90% of all sales are still retail. They're not online. So what he's doing is he's helping Just When Die members take their product that's selling on Amazon, he evaluates it, he reaches out to places like QVC, um, the HGC network, Walmart, Lowe's, Bed Bath & Beyond, and other places to get those products to sell in the retail big box store. This just started. He's been doing this with his team for decades. He just joined us. And he's part of Just One Dime. And very soon you guys will see me interview him and talk to you about, him talk to you about how to do that if you want to do that on your own. It's very difficult, but it is awesome. So our goal, you guys, we're thinking is we're not just helping people to sell online. And I'm proud to say we have made several millionaires now. People went from zero to over a million dollars in profit in a year on Amazon. Like that's that right there makes my day. Like I didn't even imagine that the first time I just did YouTube videos to help people. Now we're talking about if it's doing well on Amazon, getting on the big box store. Now I want you guys to think with me and imagine this, okay? You guys know what Shark Tank is, right? Imagine that instead of people pitching to investors for a product, and that's it, they actually pitch an Amazon product. Hey guys, this product is selling this well on Amazon. Here are the numbers. They show the seller central. Here are the sales. Here's the profits. Here's my supplier. I would like you to put this into Home Depot. Now, we already have two, two, who said yes. By two, I mean big box stores who said they will sit on the investor board as we launch this show. And it'll be TV and or YouTube or both, right? Where you can actually go and pitch your product to investors to get it into a retail store. Now, some of you guys are going, yeah, is there some sales pitch at the end? There's not. I got no sales pitch. I'm telling you, we were working on this in the back and we've created it. So far, we have only offered it to our advanced members and it remains that way for now. But I'm telling you, this is where Just One Dime is moving, which is like awesome. So combine opportunities to get into big box plus the opportunity to turn that into a show where you can pitch to investors. Just unbelievable. Okay, that's just one of the ideas I want to share with you guys. Something else to share with you guys that we're working on in the back end. We are now in 89 countries, which is still mind blowing to me. And we are moving towards the creation of a very large center here in Austin called Just One Dime University. Just One Dime University will be a place where people who want coaching in person, not like this, they want to sit down at a table together. And by the way, I'm not five foot four. Why does everyone think I'm short? I'm right under six feet. I'm, I'm a tall, handsome, great man. I'm just joking. <laughs> I have to be cheesy every now and then. My wife calls me crazy. <laughs> but people at the stuff like, you're so tall. I'm like, what's wrong with my videos? Do I look super short? <laughs> but when we can together sit down, myself, just one nine coaches, and show you, help you build your Amazon store. Like you come out for a month or something or for a few weeks. It would also be have a conference center where we could work together with the conference center to, to do this together as a team. There's so much going on. That's just like the tip of the iceberg. Not to mention we're going to China in October, which is going to be amazing. And when we're there, we're bringing a team of people and showing them how to source. Every person gets their own personal sourcing agent. So in September, 
in China, we didn't app, we didn't spend a single dime advertising this. We didn't advertise it. All we did was just I did a video. We told people about it, and boom, people started applying. We had a bunch of applications. We accepted a small portion of them. Not everyone was accepted, and so we, myself, and just when I'm coaches, we're not just going to take you to China to show you how to source, and you won't just get your own personal sourcing agent. But every night, we'll spend two hours in a meeting room at the hotel, teaching you. How to integrate that immediately into your Amazon store in your PPC ads. And there's a technique for finding products that is so powerful. It beats any method out there, in my opinion. It is using a PPC ad to find products that people are searching for that no one else is selling. Now, we do teach this, what I just told you, we teach that on our team, in our program. However, we're going custom, in depth, super detailed for people on this trip. There's tons more I could tell you guys. Oh, if you're in the United Kingdom right now, we will be there in September. If you're in Guatemala right now, we will be there in December. If you're in Austin, hey everybody, we will be there in February. I mean, January. Tons of cool stuff going on. In Los Angeles will be our next summit, February-ish, March of 2019, which will be awesome. And we have most people right there in Los Angeles. Okay, I'm gonna stop that. I'm gonna answer a couple more questions. And I'm gonna close this off. Hope this has been really helpful to you guys. I've been waiting for the longest time to share this with you guys. Okay. Um, John says, let's see, let me scroll down. I'm now launching my product on Amazon. That's awesome. Let's see. Reviews will increase conversion, but you will still get sales if you have an optimized ad. That's true. I wouldn't uh, recommend anyone miss out on those sales. Okay. Justin, oh man, your question just shot back up. Sorry, man. There's a thousand questions here. Let me just grab this one. I said, you're inspirational. Can you please, thank you. Um, can you please um, help me? How can I send a product from Turkey to Amazon FBA? Charges are so high there. I just can't get past it. So if your supplier is in Turkey, have you considered using a supplier that is not in Turkey? Or what I'm guessing is you found your supplier in China. You had it shipped specifically to Turkey and now you want to send it to Amazon. What I would do, ZKM, is have it go directly from the supplier to Amazon. Because you're right. Many countries in Tur Turkey and in that area are extremely expensive to ship. So I would buy, I would never see the product. I you will spend less money paying someone a one-time fee to go look at the product for you. We have, we have an office and a team in China who can do that, brother. And then have them ship it directly to Amazon's warehouse. And as long as you have the FNSKU label printed on the product it will go into the warehouse. You don't have to see the product yourself. Yeah. Um, can you compare Jod to a box and Helium 10 service? And what do you think about Viral Launch? <laughs> I love it. So first of all, let me say Helium 10 is great. Viral Launch is great. And Jod to a box is really great though. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. So they serve different purposes. You just shared three different tools that do three different things. Okay. Helium 10, Jod to a box overlaps some. Um, I've used all three services. So I can speak confidently about each. Uh, viral launch, in my opinion, is too expensive. I, I think it, it's gouging. It's just, I think it's crazy. Like it's so expensive to launch a new seller. Like I wouldn't have dreamed of that. Like for the first six months until we're really, really doing well, then I would have considered it. So that's my opinion. But the service itself, I think is awesome. It's brilliant. It's smart. It works. And I love it. Um, Helium 10, I also think it's too expensive. <laughs> Um, again, I think some companies are charging too much. Like you don't have to charge that much to get these results. It's automated. It runs by itself. You don't have to charge so much because all of these things you can do on your own without the tool. John Toolbox's biggest problem, this is our own, our own uh, program, is it's not intuitive enough. It's not user friendly enough. We have to work on that. Um, we are, our team has jumped into software and we do not have near the experience in software that other teams might have. And that's primarily all that they do. We are Amazon sellers. So we understand what you need. We understand exactly the results you're looking for. Okay. Um, and this is in all respect to Casey Gauss. He, he says this publicly. Okay. He doesn't sell on Amazon. His partner does. He doesn't because his focus is software. And that's why I think why the software is really good. But I would rather use tools where someone is selling on Amazon. They're living it. They're dreaming it. They're breathing it. They're eating it. They're sleeping it like it's part of their life. So what we do is create products that come out of the needs that we run into. I need a tool that does a better job at automating messages, uh, managing inventory, 
uh, managing PPC ads. I mean, Jod Toolbox is the most all-in-one tool I've ever run into, but and it has one part that's for product research. Helium 10 has a lot more in product research. And in that, they're better than Jod Toolbox. Jod Toolbox is better at automating mundane tasks. That's my honest answer, guys. So the good and the bad of all. Cool. All right, guys, this has been awesome. I am sorry that <laughs> I'm definitely not suggesting anti-e-commerce secret admirer. No way. Um, I will forever and ever be e-commerce. I absolutely love e-commerce. Um, never. Yeah. I am saying if you're selling on Amazon, why not also sell in big box stores? Why not? Another question, guys. I mean, if you're selling on Amazon, why aren't you selling on eBay? It's like you've done 90% of the hard work. Why not just go sell on eBay too and increase your income? You see, it only makes sense. Multiply the platforms and then Walmart and then Jet and so forth. Guys, this is has been a real joy for me to do this. I hope it's been extremely helpful to you. What I say, this is not so I could give you a pitch, okay? I'm a very genuine, down-to-earth, overly blunt, sometimes I piss people off person, but I will tell you, if you haven't joined Just One Dime, we rolled out three new programs a few weeks ago, three. Doubled the one-to-one -one coaching in one of them, almost doubled all the stuff you get in another one and have a very low cost version if you just want the course in the six hours of live group coaching every week. So if you go to just one dime.com slash coaching, just one dime.com slash coaching, check them out. Either way, I hope this has been incredibly helpful to you guys and you guys have an awesome day. All right. You guys take care. I will see you soon. And I'm going to hit all these buttons at the same time. <laughs> I'm going to try. Goodbye, Facebook. Goodbye, YouTube. And goodbye, Instagram, my friends. Love you guys.